This is a simple tutorial on Smart Photo Editor, but basically it's really a review. A lot of people ask whether this is more of a toy or a professional photo editing tool. I am not a professional photographer, but I take tons and tons of pictures and consider myself a pretty good photographer. And no, I didn't take the picture I will use in this example. I got it from Pixabay. But it's just to give you an idea, and it's a good picture. Um, in my opinion, this program is reasonably priced. I think I paid a little less than $30 for it. It was on a sale. Um, I really like it a lot. And the reason I like it is because it's somewhat limitless. They have a community set up where they're constantly adding different uh, photo effects into the program. And I'll show you what I mean by photo effects. There's probably maybe a couple of thousand, five thousand or so effects you can select that are basically clickable. You don't have to be a master. Um, it doesn't have the learning curve that Photoshop might have. And I haven't used Photoshop often because I tried and I just think it's too clunky and cumbersome. And I don't have the psychic energy to learn such a program. I actually love this program. I think it was a great investment for the price I paid for it. I use it constantly to edit all kinds of photos. So I would not say it's a toy. I say it's definitely a substantial program, but maybe not for, for a professional photographer. Um, even though a professional photographer could definitely benefit from it, I think professionals like more control. And now, enough of me blabbing about the Smart Photo Editor program, and let's get some action going here. All right. When you open up the interface, this is what you get. The tutorials here that kind of teach you how to use it. Um, over here is some toolbars, which I'll go into. Over here are your recent files and where you can load images and the usual stuff across the top. File, edit, blah, blah, blah. All right, first thing you do is hit load my image. And the image I'd like to select is called Lady in a Hat. Nice image, but let's show you what can be done with it. The first thing you can do is, let's do something simple first. Like any other photo editor, it has basic editing features. So click on image treatment. And as you can see, there's auto tone, auto levels. Auto levels doesn't do a lot. Makes it a slight bit richer looking, but really not much. All right, then there's the usual brightness. You know, you know how brightness works. There's lights, which I like a lot. I use pretty often. Darks, shadows. That's a good one, too. If you put shadows to the far left, it kind of gives you a cool kind of a, like a deeper, richer, more like a haunted effect. Um, let's put it back where it was. There's blacks, which is weird, but I don't use that often either. Then there's variation. Variation. I can't talk again. Contrast and there's clarity, which kind of makes it look almost vectorish. And there's the haze which is similar to blacks. And then there's vibrance, which again is kind of similar to blacks. And saturation I use a lot. Saturation is exactly what you think it is, that, which you can make a nice black and white picture or that. Okay, the other basic tools over here on the right side in the toolbar, there's text where you would click the text box here. And over here you type in your text. I'll type in the word, I don't know, lady in hat. Right? And that's it. Um, and oh, you can move your text around like that. You make it big. You can use features in the text toolbar up here. You can change the color if you wanted to or make it yellow just for the heck of it. You can make part of it a different color or the whole thing by highlighting or whatever. You can move it around, resize it. The usual things, just like you can do pretty much in Microsoft Paint. Okay, um, and then when you're done, you just click off screen somewhere and it locks it into where you want it on your picture. All right, I'm going to undo that. And you can undo by hitting your undo button. Or if you don't like a feature, each feature you add for one picture goes up here. I don't know what to call it. I guess your picture view thingamajig, picture viewer. If you don't like it, like text, I don't want it, I can click here or I can hit undo. It's just easier to look up here and hit the X. There's an X as you hover over each box, except the original. The original you can't move. But say I don't want text. I can just click here. Gone. Done. All right. That's enough about that. Now the fun stuff. 
If you go into effects gallery, this is where the fun stuff starts. There are literally thousands and thousands of features to choose from. It does take a while to load up because my computer is like crazy slow. I got to get a new one. This one sucks. Anyway, it'll open up a bunch of boxes. Um, and as you can see, it says page one of 593. Do the math. There's probably a bunch of features on each page. I didn't add them up, but there's literally thousands and more being added because it's a community-based program where different people can generate different effects and add them to like a big gallery. So there's thousands and thousands. Here's some basic ones. There's stuff over here you can do. They're like categories of effects. There's like dramatic. And as you can see, like here's one called black and white bright. Say you wanted to turn this picture into a plain black and white bright. You do that. Over here might be some sliders where you can change that effect a little bit or a lot. Hit OK. Cool. Done. That's really nice. And now, say you wanted this black and white picture a little more pronounced, you could do your image treatment as I showed you and change the brightness. See? All right. Now, say you don't like that black and white feature and you don't want to do image treatment. Again, you can hit your undo button as many times as you need to, or you can go up here and hover over a recently used feature and close it out. So I don't want to use image treatment right now. I don't want to use black and white and I don't want to use the previous image treatment. All right, let's do some more fun stuff. Effects gallery. Click on it, let it load up. See a little spinny thing. All right. Now, if you go onto the top where it says page one of whatever it says, right now we're at page one of 593. If you hover over it, it gives you a slider so you can rapidly skip to further pages up into your gallery of effects. See? Look at that. Nice. Um, okay. Here's some other effects, and I'll show you how powerful this program is. One click and a couple of alterations, you're done. Let's do something crazy. This feature here is called Major Tweaks Plus. I mean, I'm not sure why you'd want to use that, but anyway, that's what it does. Now, it opened up that effect. It has master fade sliders for that effect and separate sliders for like different colors. And you can get some pretty cool effects like that. Like, look at this, how it changed the color in these concentric or spinny circle things. You could do merge. Um, so that's the effect. If you like what you've done now and you select OK, it locks the effect into your picture. And now you can do File, Save As. And if you were going to save this, I usually pick 1024 high that's just a good size for me to work with and I leave my quality at um, the highest level and I'll usually use or always use JPEGs so now we've got it selected as a JPEG large file high quality and again size 1024 high hit OK see now as it goes to save your newly enhanced file it says lady in hat PE you can cross that out and name it whatever you want or leave it as Lady in Hat PE. And as you can see, it'll save it automatically with a different file name with PE, which I guess is for photo editor. And it won't overwrite your original image, which I've been guilty of doing many times when I'm editing something and wanted to keep my original image. I overwrote it. So that's a good feature to have. All right. So if you would hit save, it would save it. All right, um, that's just a basic intro. My recommendation is to buy this program. It's definitely worth it. I'll come back and do some more um, videos on more exciting things you can do in Smart Photo Editor, but this is definitely not a toy. Great tool for any photographer or anybody who wants to photo um, enhance or enrich or retouch their pictures. Okay, see you at the next um, tutorial or review. Bye. There's a thin line between thin reality, line and reality and psychosis. Please subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>